I feel like it's time for a new nighttime writing vlog before the end of the year. Looking a little rough. We're gonna go with it. First, we're gonna make a drink. How are you guys doing? How's it going? We are working on Marionette's book four, which is crazy. I'm trying to remember when we did the first nighttime writing vlog. Was Marionette's book one even out yet? So for a drink, we're gonna mix a little bit of this strawberry vanilla Olipop. It's got like prebiotics and stuff in it. Um, I really like these. We're gonna do a little bit of guava kombucha. This is a recipe, by the way, I have never tried before, so this could very well be disgusting. And topping it off with some tequila. Shout out to my friend Paige, who sent me a birthday slash Christmas present, which was like a Katie-themed advent calendar with a gift to open every day. And so naturally there was some tequila in there. In my younger days. So yeah, we're gonna be working on Marionette's book four, Ruthless Ends today. This book is coming out in September. And I have a lot to update you on when it comes to this book. I've been working on it a lot in the past couple of days. I officially wrapped up with client work this past week. Now I am off for the rest of the year when it comes to client stuff. I have a few more obligations. I need to do one more video for Patreon. Other than that, we're done with work stuff full of the year. I am booking clients for next year. My calendar is almost completely filled for next year, which is crazy. I'm taking on fewer clients next year because I'm taking some breaks in the middle of the year, which I don't usually do. So as of right now, I think I'm booking in to October, maybe even November. I don't know. I don't think I did an intro. Hi, <laughs> welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Katie Wismer. I'm an author and an editor. I have eight books out currently. Book number nine is coming out February 20th of 2023. It's called Broken Perfect Lies. It's a romantic suspense, bodyguard, romance, spicy standalone. I need a better pitch for that. That was too many words. The book we're working on today is going to be book number 10, unless there's a release in the middle of these two. Speaking of gifts, I want to show you something ridiculous that I bought for myself. <laughs> I had a lot of ways to justify it to myself though. For one, I was like, this is a birthday present to myself. I just had my birthday. This is a Christmas present to myself. This is a, I just published my eighth book celebration gift. This is my, congratulations, this is the best year I've had in publishing ever gift. So anyway, I bought myself a new bag. Part of my justification was also that I don't have a good laptop bag, so I wanted something big enough to carry my laptop, especially when I'm traveling and everything. What I've been using is my backpack, which is the backpack I have had since freshman year of college. This is the backpack that I have been using since I was 18. I'm now 26, and when I'm walking through an airport with my little backpack, I feel like I'm still a college student. So I was like, I want something <laughs> to start using that doesn't make me feel like a child anymore. So long story short, this is the bag I bought. isn't she pretty so and it has this extra strap which i thought would be nice for like when i'm going through the airport and everything it fits my laptop perfectly big fan big fan of her other updates i am trying out a new program while we're writing ruthless ends i am trying out scrivener i've tried scrivener before i want to say the last time was probably when i was in high school and like i said i'm now 26 so it's been a long time the program itself has updated and changed a lot since then i've heard mixed things about scrivener people who like scrivener are like diehards and then some people i've gotten a lot of people like reach out to me like this is really good for like brainstorming and drafting but then for editing and stuff word is still better so for now, I'm at least using it for the rough draft and the planning and stuff. And I can see why it would be better for that. It's easier to like move things around, which I do like. So we are currently writing in Scrivener. I don't want you to see anything like this, but we have gotten quite a few chapters written. The ones that have little descriptions that I'm covering up have not been written, but these ones have been written. I'm thinking I want to try to get to 80K by March 1st. I'm just estimating the draft is going to be around 80K. I just want to finish the rough draft. We've written um, almost 7,000 words so far. We've gotten it down to less than 1,000 words per day to get there on time at this rate, so I think we're looking good. The problem being I still have a lot to figure out with this book, which is why I have been in my notebook all day today brainstorming. And literally the top of the page says brainstorm slash let's fix this mess. So I made a list for myself of things that I myself need to figure out, even if they aren't going like word for word into the book, I need to know these 
um and then i just started like brainstorming like well what if we did this well what if we did this well what if this happened or what if this character made this choice instead so i'm really just having like a conversation with myself on the page asking myself a lot of questions putting bullet points in of like things that have been introduced in previous books that I definitely want to make sure to tie back to. I wrote at the top of this page what would be fun for me to write so I can really try to bring that into this book. And what I'm thinking I want to do is I'm going to re-listen to the audiobooks of the first three books and take notes while I'm listening to remind myself of all of the little details, also to just kind of experience it as a reader again because it's been a while to remind myself of the things that I love about this series, see if it comes up with any new ideas, that kind of stuff. So tonight, um, I actually don't think there's going to be a whole lot of writing. I'm still really problem solving, brainstorming, that kind of thing. We might start rereading book one. I don't know yet. I do have a list of scenes that I know I need to write, but they're so far from the beginning. I've already written all the scenes that I knew were at the beginning. So I could jump in and write some random scene from the last third of the book, but I think I would rather get a more solid idea of the book as a whole instead of just writing these little scenes that I know are gonna happen, you know? So that's the plan for today. Tonight, I should say. And thank you so much to Dossier for sponsoring today's vlog. We're switching over to a new perfume today, you guys. Dossier is a fragrance company that I've worked with in the past for the past, I don't know, two years at this point. They make dupes for designer scents. So you can go on their website and see what perfume their scent was inspired by, but all of their perfumes are about 30 or $40 compared to hundreds of dollars. I personally pick one of their perfumes and I associate it with each of my books, which is why we're choosing a new one for this new project. Ruthless Ends perfume is officially their Ambery Lavender scent. I can't even tell you, like the second I smelled this, I was like, book four, book four. If you wanna check them out, I'll have them linked down below in the description. Make sure to use my link and my code to get some money off. Highly, highly recommend. It's about 4.15 in the afternoon, so we still have the whole night ahead of us. See how much we can get done. Also, just wanted to mention about the bag, in case you were at all interested. I got it from The Real Real instead of just purchasing it outright, both because I liked the sustainability aspect of um, buying used items and then also got a little bit of money off that way as well. This video is now sponsored by them. Just thought I'd throw that in there. If I got every word perfectly weighted on a thin piece of paper, would it make any difference? Would it change for the better if I wrote you a poem, if I posted a for the day done i was doing the math and if i write just a thousand words every day for 2023 with the length that my books are i would finish like four four and a half books in a year and writing a thousand words a day is like super doable i don't think i'll be able to do that every single day but i feel like i underestimate how much i could write in a year like if i really wanted to as much as i am not an outliner sometimes if I have the whole thing set up and I know what I'm writing that day and I know what the scene's supposed to be and I have an outline basically, I can get through that really quickly, especially if I'm dictating. I cannot get a thousand words in like 10 minutes. Like is 2023 going to be the year that I start spending more time outlining ahead of time? Say it ain't so it might be. The lighting in there was really bad because it was just like the TV reflecting on my face. <laughs> so to finish off the vlog, we're in here. I did ask if you guys had any questions over on Instagram. So we'll go through those really fast. Will there be a spinoff series in the marionettes world? I definitely have considered it. I feel like at some point, yes, definitely. I have actually several ideas of for different spinoff series, some from characters that you've already met, some from characters that you haven't met yet. I feel like there's a lot a lot of possibilities they would be the kind of spin-off series at least one of them would be 
where you could read it without having read the first marionette series so you could read whatever series first and then i have one spin-off idea that you'd probably want to read after reading the marionette series and then i have several questions that are kind of similar basically asking would you ever write this genre or this genre? <laughs> Would you ever write sci-fi or dystopian? Have you ever considered writing a thriller? Book genre you like to read but never saw yourself writing, all that kind of stuff. I am sticking in with the genres that I am writing currently. I'm trying to narrow my focus a little bit more. So no, I don't have any plans to branch out to other genres. As far as like dystopian, honestly, I feel like marionettes kind of has that dystopian vibe to them. Sci-fi, it's funny because someone else also asked about Project Z. I wrote a sci-fi first two books in a series back in 2019. They've been shelved. They will never be revived. They are left in the past. We're going to leave them there. So I have written that in the past, but I don't plan on writing it in the future. Any plans or ideas for paranormal books after the marionettes? Those spinoffs, but um, I definitely want to continue writing paranormal, not just in the marionettes world. I just haven't had an idea for it yet, but ask me tomorrow maybe i'll have it by then <laughs> the question about specifically have you ever considered writing a thriller broken perfect lies which is my book that's coming out in february is the closest you will see to that from me it's a romantic suspense so it's still romance centered but it has those thriller vibes so um that is now up for pre-order that's an announcement um the cover reveal is coming january 16th but you can now pre-order it i'll have it linked down below it's coming out february 20th and the last question we will answer today to finish off the vlog is what was the hardest scene to write in any of your released books? I actually don't know if I have an answer to this. Scenes are hard to write for a couple of different reasons. Sometimes it's a scene that like I just can't get right. I keep rewriting it. Something's not working. And then sometimes scenes are just like really emotional and just like emotionally taxing to write. In general, something I don't like when it comes to scenes is if you have a scene with a ton of characters and a ton of dialogue and stuff and like keeping track of who's doing what and who's saying what big casts in a single scene i don't like writing like if there's 10 people having a conversation you always have to have dialogue tags to like say who's talking and then you have to like also make sure it's not like clunky and repetitive in the writing so i just like hate dealing with that when i'm writing so any kind of scene like that I'm trying to think if there's a specific scene that was the hardest to write in any of my books usually the like really emotional ones um when bad things happen to my characters or really emotional things are happening are not hard for me those are the ones that come out real easily and those are my favorite to write i don't know what that says about me <laughs> it's usually the um quieter scenes that are more kind of like the in-between transitions those are the ones that are harder for me to write because i'm not as like excited to write them they're necessary for the story i still try to make them as engaging as i can but so i feel like the answer wouldn't be very fun or exciting <laughs> um the scenes that are the hardest for me to write are the quieter in between scenes that aren't the big like grand moments in a book if that makes sense anyway i'm gonna round off the vlog here so i can edit it and get it up thank you guys so much for hanging out with me you can pre-order broken perfect lies now bloodless ties is out now um if you want to apply to be an arc reader for broken perfect lies or sign up to be part of the cover reveal team those links will also be down below all the usual stuff thanks so much for watching have a great day see you in the next one very very soon bye no.